we have a main container that's wrapping the whole thing. That container has two children, a header and a main section. We have our header and the rest of the main. The main has two children, our aside, and then our article, everything over here. The article has two children. One of them is content. And so that content is just the text that's here. And one of them is the footer. So with Flexbox and just a few styles, we can get this layout. Um, the first thing we have to do in the CSS is typically a reset. And so a reset usually comes with most CSS frameworks that you'll that you'll work with today. Um, in this case, all we have to do is reset the margin because this code pen seems to have a margin around the edges. Uh, and then we have to set the height. And so width is always going to be 100% by default. Um, but height is set to auto by default. So when we change it to 100, so this is the auto setting. Uh, auto means the whole page is going to scroll. When we change it to 100%, uh, it's saying make it 100% of the height of the window. Didn't refresh, so I had to. Um, that's going to help us as we move down the tree here. The container is the first child of the body. Uh, we're setting it to display flex. So without display flex, none of this works. Actually, still, it worked out pretty well, but <clears throat> again, the whole page is going to scroll. Um, by default, this display flex uses flex direction row. And so row will put everything side by side unless you tell it to wrap. And then again, our 100% height here is 100% of the parent. And so when we turn it off, we get a full scrolling page. When we turn it back on, it's again limited to the size of the window. And it doesn't seem to want to refresh every time I do. So I'll just keep doing that. Um, this header takes no additional styles. It's just going to it's just going to expand to fill whatever you put in it. So if we had a paragraph in here that also said header, this should break itself down to a new line. And the header is just going to expand to take up that space. Um, the main is, our main container is a sibling of header, and it has a lot of stuff in it that header does not. So because we're using Flexbox, it's going to take up all the remaining space because it has enough content to fill it. Um, typically, I would use Flex1 here. And so Flex1 is shorthand for Flex Grow 1, Flex Shrink 1, and Flex Basis 100%. And that number one is a Boolean. So if you say flex grow one, you're saying it's okay to grow. Let it fill any container. Um, flex shrink one means let it contract to fit whatever it needs to be. Um, and then flex basis is sort of like width or height. It's a percentage. And if you have, for example, flex shrink turned off, It'll never let it get. It'll never let the container get below whatever you set as the basis. So that's a story for another day. Uh, in this project, we actually don't need it at all because we have enough content to fill the rest of the screen. So we're just going to keep it as trim as possible here. Um, Overflow hidden keeps the entire page from scrolling. So just like up above, if we were to comment out Overflow hidden here, uh, the whole page scrolls which isn't a disaster, but uh, what we want in this case is that fixed footer. So there we go. Um, and then we get inside the main. Inside the main, we have an, a sidebar, our aside, and then our main content, the article. Um, you can set the width of the sidebar a few ways. I Love responsive design, but I typically go with a fixed width for something like a sidebar. It tends to work out better. Um, and in this case, 
this line here, flex 0, 0, 200 pixels is the magic number. Um, and the reason for that is if we don't have any value there, it'll just use its content. It'll, it'll use the article. It'll let, it'll let the article kind of dominate the screen and you'll get unexpected results. Um, using with doesn't work in this case because this is a flex child and flex children by default use flex grow and flex shrink one. So basically if we don't reset that, it's going to allow it to contract to any size. So it doesn't, it's not going to honor that 200 pixel width. Uh, it's going to do the same thing for flex basis because it still has flex shrink and flex grow turned on. So the shorthand here This is what it's doing by default. This tells it not to shrink below 200 pixels. And right now it's being allowed to expand beyond 200 pixels if it needed to. Um, but because of the width of the article, it's not going to. So this is how we get that sidebar. Um, and something that's cool about this layout is if we were to display none, the article is going to fill the content perfectly. Because right now the article is just filling any available space that it has. So with the sidebar visible, the article has all the space it needs except for 200 pixels. Uh, once we get into that article, this is another flex container. You can have you can have flex displays inside other flex displays. And you actually have to if you want to have control over it. So in order for us to make this into a column instead of a row, which it wants to be by default, so it would look like that side by side, uh, you have to set another display flex on it. Just like before, I typically would put flex one here. And I normally put flex one on any container that I want to take up all available space. In this case, because it's big enough, we don't need to do that. And in setting overflow auto, it limits it to everything except the footer. When we turn off overflow auto, it again makes, actually we can't scroll anything now because main is turned off. Uh, so this article is only this tall. It's only what you see on screen. Um, and the rest of the content's hidden. Overflow auto will put the scroll bar on it when necessary, while overflow scroll will put a scroll bar on it all the time. And so most of the time you want to use auto because it makes your design look nicer in cases where you don't have a scroll bar. Uh, again, the footer is just like the header. It doesn't need any additional styles. It's just going to, it's going to fill the space to accommodate whatever you put inside it. Um, and I think because of how this is laid out, we could actually take this footer, make it a third child of the container, and it should sit right below everything else. And that still scrolls, the sidebar is still fixed. That's the magic of Flexbox.